Greetings. Welcome to a little introductory lecture on the genitive of the whole, also known as the partitive genitive, featuring Ovid and Horace. Okay. Here's an example of the partitive genitive in action. Let's look at this sentence. That's a line, well, two lines from Ovid's Metamorphoses. Parte tamen meliore mei super alta perennis, astra ferrar nomen querit indelebile nostrum. And it means, but with the better part of myself, I will be carried everlasting above the lofty stars, and my name will be indestructible. He says this near the end of his 15 book epic poem. He does not seem to suffer from confidence issues. Anyway, uh, we've got parte me with a part of myself. Me is genitive. That's the partitive genitive. And mei is the genitive of ego mei mihi mei mei. Cool. Now, here we've got another. A uh, line of verse. This is from Horace. It's actually one in a one in a fraction. Lines of verse. It's from his epistles. Dimidium facti qui coipit habet sapere aude incipe. And that means one who has begun already has half of the job done. Dare to be wise. Begin. And you may recognize uh, sapere aude from a sign that Dr. Horn has hanging on. The door to his classroom, if I believe, if I remember correctly. So let's look at Demidium Facti. Half of the deed or half of the job, half of the achievement. And again, factum, factum facti neuter. Uh, that's the genitive, partitive genitive. And this little image here is an exhortation. If you have a paper to do, start, start it. Starting it is winning half the battle or whatever metaphor you want to use. Okay, so now here uh, we have some examples, some other examples of the partitive genitive. So, with the partitive genitive or the genitive of the whole, you will find it being used when you want, when you have a noun that represents some subset of a thing or some subset of a collective. So here we've got pars urbis, part of the city. And here we've got nemo discipulorum, no one of the students or none of the students. And here, half of the work. So you've got a noun and then you've got the genitive of the noun. This is the partitive genitive. Ars urbis, no discipulorum, medium laboris. Now, here we've got some idiomatic uses, which might seem counterintuitive to an English speaker. The, the examples that we've seen up to now seem pretty straightforward to an English speaker because they use the genitive in Latin. And no, it's not possessive, but it works if you translate it as of. These examples here are idiomatic because they don't necessarily sound OK if you use of. So I'm going to give them to you in translation ease and then in actual English. 
Quid nui, literally, what of new, but what new, or what, you know, what's new? But you can just ask this as a sentence when you run into someone. Hey, quid noe, what's new, what's up? Nihil kerti, literally, nothing of certain, or idiomatically, nothing certain. Multumboni, literally, much of good, or much good. Nihil temporis, literally nothing of time. Idiomatically, no time. Satis eloquentiae, this one might sound a little better to English speakers. You can say enough eloquence or enough of eloquence. I think we say both. Uh, decem milia crystallorum, oh my goodness, can you imagine? 10,000 cookies. That's the idiomatic way of translating it. In translationese, ten thousands of cookies. Quid concilii, literally, what of a plan? Idiomatically, what plan? Walete. I hope your day contains multum yukundi. Or liter uh, literally much of pleasant. Or I hope your day contains much that is pleasant. Bye.